Hi, boys and girls, it's Mrs. Gorski. And today what we're going to do, we're going to talk about a new topic, which is called number strings. And ever since I was teaching math, this has to be one of my most favorite topics to cover and to teach. And number strings are basically a number sentence that has three or more add-ins or numbers that you add in that one particular number sentence. However, what we need to do is follow specific rules, specific strategies in order to solve these number strings. Because the cool thing when you are adding, remember, you can rearrange numbers in any way and the order isn't gonna matter. You should still be getting the same answer whether, however you have those numbers in a particular order, okay? But in order to get the answer correct, that's why we have to follow these strategies when you deal with long number sentences. Now, let's take a look at each strategy. The first one says, make a 10. And I have an example of a 10 fact, eight plus two. So you need to look at the numbers that you are adding. And here I have three plus two plus seven. You have to think, is there a way to make 10? So sometimes they might have it, sometimes they might not. And that's totally fine. You're not going to get every strategy in every number sentence because it all depends on the numbers that are making up that number sentence. Let's take a look at the second one. Find a double. Here's an example. Four plus four. So here in this case, I have a three, a two, and a seven. I do not see a double available. Remember, doubles are two numbers that are exactly the same that you are adding together. And then find a near double. I do have an example of a near double, which is a four plus five. A near double is a number sentence that is adding that when you see the two numbers, they can be directly right next to each other on a number line. So for example, a near double here I have is four plus five. I have another one, two plus three. That's another near double. If you notice two and three are right next to each other on a number line. I could have seven plus eight. They're right next to each other on a number line. I could have eight plus nine, right next to each other on a number line. Six plus seven, right next to each other on a number line. So what you're gonna do with the near double, you can take a doubles fact and either add one or take one away in order to figure out what your solution or your sum for that particular near double would be. So let's take a look at the four plus five. I could take the lower number. I could say four plus four and one more because that's where you get the five. That's the one more. So four plus four is eight plus one more is nine. So four plus five is nine. Now I could take it from the opposite end too. I could say five plus five. I could use that as my double, but I have to take one away because of this four. So five plus five is 10, take away one, then your answer would be nine. So here, four plus five would be nine. So that's near doubles. So we will eventually get into that, but it's also really good to start talking about it because since a lot of you might know your doubles facts very well, that could help you figure out for those near doubles too. So let's go ahead and get started with the first number string we have here. I have three plus two plus seven. So let's take a look at what we have for our strategies. First one, I always like to make sure, is there a way that I could make 10? So this goes back for you to know those make 10 combinations. So I'm hoping you're looking at this number string and I hope you could really identify that three and seven is going to be 10. So watch how I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to combine these numbers and I'm going to kind of show you in that arrow formation here. So three plus seven is going to be 10. So now I don't have to touch these numbers anymore because they are already combined. So what I want to do now, I want to take this 10 and add two more because I still have to Consider this two. So 10 plus two more is going to be 12. So that would be your answer. That would be your sum 
your solution for this particular number string. Now, I want to take this and do it a different way because not only do we have a way to make 10, but we also have a near double in this particular one. Do you know where it is? I wonder if you know where, where it is. It would be three and two because they're right next to each other on the number line. They're easy to identify because if you're counting, those numbers are right next to one another. So let me erase this. And our end solution should still be 12. Because remember, when we add, it doesn't matter the order. We should still get the same answer. So let's go ahead and do three plus two. Now, I always, so when I do with my near doubles, I always like to start with the lower one because I like to add one more. Sometimes adding for me is a lot easier than taking away. And that's for a lot of people too. Um, so here I go. 3 plus 2 or 2 plus 3. Some of you automatically already might know that your answer would be 5. But let's go ahead and figure it out using the near double strategy here. I'm going to do the, near, the double, which is 2 plus 2, which is 4. Add one more because of this 3. So 2 plus 2 is 4. One more is 5. So that just proves that 3 plus 2 is 5 just showing from a near doubles perspective. So now I wanna take this five and add it to my seven. So here you go. Maybe you might not know that combination right off the bat. So use another strategy in order to figure it out. Usually what I like to do is a count on method. So I'm gonna take that seven, put it in my head, and then count on five more. So I'm gonna go seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So notice how that answer still remains the same. Three plus two plus seven equals 12. Last time we did it with making a 10 combination. Now we did it with a near double combination. You still get 12 as your answer. So hold on, hold tight. We're gonna do another one. Okay, so we're back. Now we're looking at our next number string. I have one plus five plus nine. So every time you're thinking about number strings, these are the strategies that are going right through my head. And this is the way I say them to myself. Can I make a 10? Could I find a double? Is there a near double somewhere? What could help me out? And maybe one of them could be there, two of them, maybe none of them. We don't know. It all depends on what's in your number sentence. So I'm looking at one, five, and nine, what strategy, just looking at those numbers, should you be looking for here? I wonder if you already found it. I hope you said I can make a 10. What two numbers are we going to use to make 10? Here we go. Nine and one. I like to put these little arrows in here because it's telling me the numbers that I'm combining after I combine them, they cannot be used anymore. So the only numbers that you should be focusing on are the ones that do not have that line next to them. They don't have a combination piece. So here, 9 plus 1, there's our 10. So now, 10 plus 5 more, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So... That would be our total. Now remember, I can do other strategies too. I can do five plus nine. That's not a near double. That's not a double. That's not a way to make 10, but I still could make those combinations. The reason why we have these strategies is because we wanna make sure that the number strings are gonna be completed as easily as possible. So the easier for you, the better. The better chances that you are gonna be correct. All right, folks, get ready. We might have a longer number string this time. Okay, guys, take a look at what I have now. I have nine plus four plus five plus one. So you know you can start combining. But what I want to do, I want to look at the strategies that I have here in front of me. First thing I want to look for, is there a way I could make 10? I think I can. I'm looking at it. I see it. I hope you see it too. It's an easy combination. 
9 and 1. There's our 10. Now, usually, there's just an additional number when we only have a number string with three add ends in it. All right? This time, we have four. So we can make another combination before we kind of put the last two pieces together. So here, I have four and five. Now we know four and five are not identical, so therefore it is not a double. But when you're counting, four and five are right next to each other on that number line, so therefore it's a near double. And how about that? I have four and five as our example. So remember when we were talking about that example, I might want to point my arrow going up there. I could also point it going down there. It all depends on how you want to draw it. Try to stay organized on this number string here. So four plus five, I always like to use the lower double. Four plus four is eight. One more is going to be nine. So now we have to add 10 and nine more. So usually anytime we make a combination with 10 and another number, especially a single digit, I kind of always think in my head, I'm going to keep this one from my 10 and replace this zero with what I am adding to it. So it's not going to be a 10 anymore. Take out that zero, put in that nine. It is now a 19. So to double check yourself, if maybe you might not think, oh, I don't understand how that happened. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So there is my 10 and nine more, gave me 19. So hold tight, let's do another one. Okay, folks, we have one that's even longer this time. I have eight plus six plus three plus seven plus two. So how about that? That's quite a big one. But if we follow these strategies, we'll be totally fine. So let's see. Let's take a look. Are there ways that maybe we could make 10? So let's take a look and see what we have. Eight, six, three, seven, two. Hmm. If you look at what my clue was here for make it 10, my example was eight plus two. So if you see this, we have an eight and a two. So there is one way to make 10. All right. Maybe there's another possibility that we could make a 10. Because now I my eight and two, I combine them. That's done. So now I have six, three, and seven. So where should I go from now? Hmm. You should be saying that there's another way to make 10 there. Three and seven. There's another 10. So now what is left is six. Now, maybe you could be that kind of person that could make those mental notes and say, okay, now I got to do 10 plus 10 plus six. Or maybe you just need to be that person and rewrite a new number string. Maybe you want to do that. So you can. So I could, here, let me actually lift this up a little bit. So I could do 10 plus 10 plus 6 equals. So you could rewrite this. Believe me, you want to try and keep this as organized as possible. So now I have a new number string because I made combinations. I made, I went from one, two, three, four, five add ends now to one, two, three add ends. So I'm making it a little bit easier. And take a look 10, 10, 6. 10 and 10, look, that's a double. 10 plus 10 is 20. Now, 20 plus 6 more. Easy peasy, guys. 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. There is your final answer. Your final answer is 26. So because what did we do? We used those strategies. Those strategies for number strings helped us out. We could have an even longer number string. We could have number strings that are double digit numbers. 
We won't even focusing on ones that are single digit numbers, but you could get ones that are even harder. But as long as you kind of follow these strategies, it's going to help you out. It's going to make things a little bit easier. So I hope you like our number strings lesson and have a great day. I'll be talking to you all soon. Bye, everyone.